none like you, Lord, on heaven nor on earth, Father. We thank you, Father God, for the anointing, the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. Father, bless you, Lord God. For you are God. You alone are worthy to be praised, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your grace, your mercy, your love, the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, speak in this place on today. Have your way, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for your grace, your mercy, your love, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that the word comes forth, Lord God, with clarity, Lord God. Lord God, no distractions on today. I bless you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, everywhere around the world, Lord God, every man, woman, and child, Lord God, that is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your protection. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that your grace, your mercy, your love and will shall endure forever. So, Father God, we bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've done and all that you said, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we're lifting you up in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we bless you, Lord. Lord God, we pray for our enemies right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, you said bless those that curse you. So, Father, we pray for them right now, Lord God, that they will repent and give their lives to Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, that they will turn away from their wicked ways. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we cast all of our cares onto you right now. Have your way. Have your way in this place, Lord God, and everywhere around the world. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. talk to you all this morning. We've been talking about God's favor. How many of y'all like God's favor? All right. Good, good, good. We've been talking about God's favor and this week will be our conclusion of talking about God's favor. And I, I pray to God that during this time of, of prayer and fasting, some of you all have seen and experienced some of God's favor already. How many of y'all have already in just these couple of days? Amen. 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 Mm. <laughs> Let me see those hands again. Okay, all right. Out of those people, keep your hands up. Now this is the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Out of those people, which one of you guys want to share what God has done in your life? Just here in these past couple of days. Anybody? Okay, come on up, Miss Julie. <coughs> Just being led by the Lord. Amen. Take your time. Yes, I just like to give this testimony that God has been good to me and His favor has been on me this week because I had an injury and I thought my I was going to have to have a total hip operation. I was very worried about it because when you get up in age, you think things are kind of falling apart, and I thought that my hip had fell apart on me. <laughs> I got nervous. I called Pastor. I asked for prayer because I was really worried. But it ended up not being what I thought it was. It ended up being just a strained ligament. Come on, um, Jesus. So they, it gave me a shot in my, in my hip. And wow. it was just better. All it just got wow. better. So she probably, she probably was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it gave me a shot in my hip. He said, well, just walk around and tell me how it feels. And as I walked around, he was just like, it wasn't even hurt or anything. I was, it, I was amazed. So that's what, that's what God's favor has been to me this week. He has blessed me with healing. Amen. When I thought it was one thing, and it just turned around. Come on, Lord. Come on, let's give it up to the Lord today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, anybody else? Anybody else want, want to take a stand? Okay, come on up, stand. Yeah, see there? Sometimes you got to give, give, give somebody an opportunity. Go ahead. My testimony. I was diagnosed with a condition I didn't expect to have. Mm. And they're telling me one thing. But I have faith. Amen. And I know everything's going to be okay. Amen. And I, being here is a testimony because I didn't want to get it. I didn't want to come. Come on, Jesus. But he, he made me get it. And he made me come. And he's telling me everything. 
don't look like it. It's not what man says. It's not what man says. And I'm not going to accept it. So I just want to live. I just need that healing that I go through. Glory for everything. Glory you know what? And my sister for being here, my niece for being here, all of you for being here because it has helped me grow and it has helped me learn that I'm not in control of this. So that's what I'm going to say. Amen. 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 Let's get it up. Want y'all do me a favor. Stretch your hands towards, towards that one right now. Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for your healing power. God, we bless you, Lord God. Father, thank you, Father God, for a spirit of healing is in this place, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that Miss Renee received her healing, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that Stephanie receives her healing, Lord God. Father, you said in your word, by his stripes, we were healed. So, Father, we bless you right now. Satan, you are a liar. You have no power over her right now. None of us. Lord God, we bless you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we walk in your anointing, your power, the authority of God that you have ordained for our lives. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for we walk by faith truly and not by sight. So, Father God, have your way in each and every area of our lives, Lord God. While the doctors, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the old report. But, Lord God, we thank you that you have the new report. So, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Everyone, Lord God, who knew that whatever condition that she thought she had before, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that it is gone. Lord God, people will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior because of the testimony on Stephanie's life. So, Father, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Yes, we've been, we've been believing God for signs, wonders, and miracles, and God is showing up. And that's what we expect, amen? Amen. So, so, so see, there we go as, oh, my God. Y'all don't mind if I take about three hours today, do y'all? Yeah. Say, so how many of y'all good give me three hours? Just come on, come on. See, see only a couple of people say, no, nah, Pastor, I can't give you three hours. I ain't going to take no three hours to say what the Lord had me to say. But if I did, I, you know, I'm just saying, y'all hungry. So here we go. I want to say this morning, as we embark on what I believe our ministry is about to enter into a place, or should I say has already entered into a place where we've never been before. There's going to come some times where we're tested. Mm. How many of y'all been tested? Mm. Some of us are going to be tested, tried, and even challenged to really check our hearts and our motives as it relates, as it relates to the kingdom of God. Because sometimes we'll do certain things. Come on now, I've seen it. I, I, even here at Living Faith, people have come in, just cleaned up the church and different things of that nature, just so they can try to get close to me. Amen. No, you ain't got to get close to me. You need to be getting close to God. Amen. Because God will, you know, if you watch a person long enough, <laughs> the enemy will expose himself. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so again, sometimes we'll get to a place in our lives where, again, as I said before, we'll be really challenged. Yeah. But remember, <laughs> your motives, your challenges will not, listen to me, will not change the favor of God that's upon your life. Amen. Amen. I don't care what your situation looking like right now. That does not change the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit that's upon your life. Amen. See, because sometimes we'll think, oh, man, I've, I've been too bad or, or what's going on in my life has been negated. No, 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 no. No, not at all. It might be delayed. It might be a little hindered. But see, the thing about it is, as far as I know, that the God we serve, he gives, he's a God, not a God of a second chance, but a God of another chance and another chance and another chance. Come on now. Amen. See, so we got to be, be he's very careful to remember the mandate is on your life of favor. Amen. All right. So let's review for those who weren't here what favor is. It'll be on the screen. Favor is to look upon fondly or to prefer. So did we agree that God, he, he prefers us yes. as his children? Amen. So he show, He has favor on us, right? Amen. So, so here's the thing now. No matter what, if you say yes to Jesus, you have access to the favor. 
Oh, oh, that, that, that's it. See, because sometimes we'll think, oh, we, we, we're so good or, or because we, we got it like that because God loves me more than he loves you. No, 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 no. He said, you know, matter of fact, remember we said a couple of weeks ago, he said he's no respecter of person. So if he's no respecter of person, if I got the favor on my life, you can have the favor on your life. All right? Okay, so here we go. Another thing with favor. It's a kind or helpful deed. An instant or voluntary assisting someone, goodwill or benevolent regard. So I want you to understand, everybody this morning, under the sound of my voice, that the favor of God will come in multiple forms, shapes, and colors. But be, be very careful that you understand that you don't allow your, as I said earlier, don't allow your situation of what it looks like to stray you away from the favor that God has upon your life. Are y'all okay with that? Yeah. So I really hope you understand how serious it is as God wants us to walk in his greatness and his authority because Satan is defeated. Amen. All right, so does everybody agree that Satan is yeah. defeated? Amen. So do you agree at the end of the book we win? Amen. So, so no matter what, uh, what what's in between, because I was talking about it this morning, um, I think about, okay, I was just, just to say, I was born in 1972. So from 1972, and then what we have is called a dash. Y'all, you, you, you know that? You know, you got your dash or some some snooty people might call it a hyphen. You know, some of y'all. But see, but see, I want to know, you, uh, not not me, but what is God saying about your dash? Amen. See, because your dash is really, if the truth be told, and I'm going to show you in the word, it should say favor. Oh, God. It should say favor. So even so when you go and they lay they stand before you and they say how great you were, and you know, some some people might be telling the truth and some people might be lying. All right? I mean, because everybody ain't going to heaven that say they love Jesus. I ain't got time to turn to that this morning, but it says everybody that says Lord, Lord shall not enter in. All right, so uh, do we agree? Okay, that's the word. So do you believe that the, the blessings of the Lord, God wants to overtake and bless every area of your life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do you believe it or do you know it? No. Come on, come on. Do you believe it or do you know it? No. no. All right. So, so at the end of the day, if you know it, there's a no shadow of a doubt. Hmm. See, because like I said before, I say now nobody can tell you that you're not saved. Oh, come on, nobody. Hey, that's not even a, a, a question. So, so if anybody try to tell you that you don't love the Lord, that you and Jesus ain't got your connection or whatever, because all the Bible says is if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So it don't say I got to turn around three times. It say I got to jump on one leg. No, no, no. Say you just got to confess Jesus as Lord of your life. So if that be the case, the same thing that God said concerning your salvation, the same thing relates to your favor. If it relates to your overflow, it relates to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1. Let me know when you're there. All right. Beyonce, you're going to get ready in a few minutes. 2 Kings chapter 4, starting at verse number 1. Are <clears throat> right, y'all ready? I don't hear no pages turning, so we're good to go. All right, here we go. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you may know that your servant feared the Lord. He said, A creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Then he followed it up. He said, tell me, what do you have in the house? Look at your neighbor and say, what do you have in the house? What do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Ooh, Jesus, black that out for a second. She, she, she said, now, now, she said, I don't got nothing in here but some Crisco oil. <laughs> but sometimes we'll get to a place where if God sends a, a man or woman of God and, 
into your life to, to say some things to you and speak some things, we'll be like, well, I don't, I don't have enough. Or I ain't. But how many of y'all know that when God says that there's something, there's something? Yeah. Amen? Amen? All right, so despite, of, again, what things may look like, if God says it's so, it's so. Yeah. All right, so we agree. Amen. So don't count yourself out when God has sent someone to count you in. Here we go, verse number three. It says, then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Then he made it a point, he said, do not gather just a few. So he said, get, 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 get quite a bit, right? Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, so here we go, verse four. He says, and when he came, when he came in, excuse me, he says, when you come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour into you unto all the vet to all those vessels and set them and set aside the full ones so she went from she said she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out now it came to pass when the vessels were full wait a minute wait a minute did y'all catch that she said she didn't have the, but a little bit but now it's saying, and it came to pass when the vessels were full. All right, here we go. Don't get too excited yet now. Hold on. That she said to her son, bring me another vessel. Come on, Bonnie. Go take care of it. And she said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go, sell the oil. Pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. My God, right there, boss. Just say it right there for now. Just say it right now. So here we go. <laughs> Verse seven again. I'm gonna just read it one more time. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, "Go." And sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Father, we thank you for this word today. <laughs> Lord, we thank you that you are a God of more than enough. Father, we thank you for your continued favor that's upon each and every one of our lives. We bless you, Lord. For you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the great I am. There's none like you. So we give you the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So if, if we could, we could go back to Verse number one. So now we have a situation where <laughs> this woman of God had a husband who was a, as it clearly says, a servant, a son of the prophets. This leads me to believe that there are some people, leaders, let's, let's, you know, because again, it starts with the head, that are not taking care of their families. <laughs> I'm going to take my time. I ain't going to take three hours, though. Don't worry. Because <laughs> she sure ain't raised her hand now. Pastor, I got three hours. <laughs> but it amazes me in the body of Christ how Someone in a fam our family dies and then we have to have a, a fish fry or, or, or raise some money or GoFundMe page to bury them. Now, when we, I would have to say that, that somebody is not being a good steward. But let me ask you a question, you know, by a show of hands this morning. Because someone didn't do the right thing, does that negate the favor that's on your life? All right, so raise your hand if you believe that the favor is still on your life. 
Okay, good, 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 good. I heard somebody say, of course. All right, good. So here we go. Thank you. I just want to read verse number one. So this woman, again, she, she had favor in multiple ways, regardless of the matter that her husband and her son did not, well, I'll say more so her husband because he's the head. He didn't take care of what he needed to do. Now, he was, a pro he was the son of the prophets, and he did not leave her or her son anything but a death debt. All right? Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, again, I, and, and I want to show you how God's favor intervened and he was glorified in it. All right? Did my Beyonce gave, gave you guys some cups? Amen. Okay, if you would, all of you, just bring your cup and just set it up here. And, and, I, and I want you to set your cups up here. Just, yeah, just set it so everybody could see it. Okay, where, where, where is Beyonce? Tell I need it. Okay, okay. All right, so, can everybody see the cups? I'm going to mix them up just a little bit, just so, it, you know, there's a, there's a reason that I'm kind of mixing them up. So, can you see all those cups? Yeah. All right. So going back to, let me see, verse number three. All right? Put it back up on the screen. Verse number three. He said, then he said, go borrow some vessels from everyone, from all your neighbors. So you guys represented the neighbors today. Thank you. Thank you. All right? I appreciate you. Al, grab, grab that, 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 uh. That oil right there, the one with the pouring in it. All right? Okay. So now, he said, go borrow the vessels for everyone, for all of your neighbors. So now we got the empty vessels, right? Amen. All right, Beyonce, come on. All right. All right, just go get the other one. I got you. You good. The Holy Spirit know how to work it on out. All right, so he said, do not gather a few, but for, for uh, instructional purposes for my military people, <laughs> Let's just pretend that these are a whole bunch of vessels. All right? Are y'all all right? Amen. All right, so the reason why I wanted to kind of mix them up because sometimes when we go borrow from different things or get different things, everybody don't have the same thing. Yes. Amen. All right? Yes. All right, so again, he said, he said, go and borrow some empty vessels. Now, she said all she had was some oil. All right. So now she ain't got nothing in the in the cabinets or anything, no food or anything like that. And she 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 broke because the people are coming to take her her sons to pay the debt because the man of God didn't take care of the business. So oh, so ladies, that's not married. Check that joker out before you get married to him. Okay. Make sure that his credit score is good. Now, if he got a zero credit score and a whole bunch of money in the bank, he's doing the doggone thing. <laughs> All right? But if he got a, a 500 credit score, uh, you need to tell that brother he's going to need it. Because what that's doing is showing a pattern that he ain't been paying his bills. Amen. All right, that was free. <laughs> All right. Then the Bible says, in, in verse number four, he says, and when he have come in, he shut the door. So, again, we're going to pretend like the door is shut. These are my two sons, you know, daughter. You know, I love you, baby. All right. So, here we go. And shut the door behind them. And then he said, pour the oil. He says, pour it into the vessel. So, Alvin, start, start pouring it in there. Be, be careful here. Don't, don't. There you go. Take your time. All right. All right. Okay. Go to the next one. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Beyonce, come on, baby. Go to the next one. Nope, nope. Okay. Go to the next one. Okay. Keep pouring. What are those keys? You got the keys? Okay. Keep, keep pouring. Keep on. Just pour that in there. Keep. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. All right, keep on. 
You got, got them all full? Nope, not yet. Keep going. See? Uh-huh. I want you to see this. Come on. So, so far, we started out with a little bit, right? Uh -huh. Now, you see, we got multiple. All right? See, but it ain't over yet. Keep on going, Alvin. Come on. So when he dropped down to verse number six, it said, now it came to pass. Go ahead, pour that thing in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now pour it in the next one. Pour it in there. So he said, now it came to pass when the vessels were full. Wait a minute. So she started out, y'all. Well, she said she didn't have enough. But see how God, see, it, it almost looked like we didn't have enough. But how in the world we started out with just, where, where, where's the thing at? We started out with just this. And then God kept on pouring. See, that's my fault. I, I'll take that one. <laughs> see that? Sometimes you got that overflow. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, please do. So now, thank you, sir. So now we got an opportunity to see where it started out when people may have said you didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You thought that you wasn't anything, but now all of a sudden there's an overflow to where it's spilling out. Yeah, see, you know, I know that was God. <laughs> I know that was God. Yeah. See, so so now we got to get to a place where we understand that the favor of God is more, more than we could ever imagine to where, again, it says that it'll overtake you. Yeah. But see, we start out looking at what we say. That's right. See, but we got to start to say what God says. Uh -huh. See, there must be a distinction when we get to a place where we understand there's a difference between God's favor and man's favor. Are, are y'all with me now? There must be a clear distinction between God and man's favor. You got to get to a place where you grow up and discern that there's a difference. Okay, here we go. Let me show you. Let me show you. Because... Oh, all right, here we go. See, God's favor, here to be on the screen. God's favor comes from obeying God's commands. <laughs> There's some prerequisites, but it doesn't negate it. See, in order to get access to it, all you got to do is obey. He does not ask for you to do anything special but live for Jesus. Because remember, it ain't all about me turning around and jumping on one leg or anything like that. But we got to believe upon the name of Jesus and his name only. Amen. So the Bible even says if an angel comes with any other gospel, <laughs> he'd be accursed. So I don't care if anybody else, I don't care if it's your best friend, your uncle, Pookie and them or whoever it is. I don't care who it is. If they come with anything else other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, they need to get up out of there. So God's favor has no limits. So there's nothing that we can't do when we have, it's us in Christ, that's the majority. So, but we got to get to a place where we understand, again, I said, he's no respect of person. So because you got access, Cedric, and I got access, those people out there who might not have gotten out of their car, but they're listening to us right now, they got access to them too. Amen. See, but like I said, there's a difference. So we got to always be careful of how we treat people because we never know how they will, how the, how your life is making an impact on them or the things that you may do. Because I think about what just happened again. The, the kids in the school, they said, okay, we're going to protest for gun violence against gun. And then there was another shooting. Saints of God, we got to pray. Not only pray, but not only just believe, but we got to know. We got to know that God is in control. But the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Mm -hmm. So it, because if we understand when we pray that God is going to be glorified in it, Amen. Amen. it's already done. Amen. So we don't know how we're impacting our loved ones if, if we're treating them wrong. If we get to a place where we, you know, God favors me, Joker, you need to get saved, you're going to hell. No, stop sending people to hell. But here's man's favor. Man favor, he wants to take credit for something that he has done for you. Be like, you know, he'd get in front of everybody. Yeah, I bought, 
I bought Pastor Willie this, this Bentley. Y'all know I want a Bentley. I ain't I'm just going to keep it on my honey, you know. But I already said that before I get a Bentley, the church is going to be paid off. The church is going to be nice. We're going to have the multiple facilities and different things like that before I go riding in a Bentley. Amen. But see, I got access to it. But sometimes we'll take that access out of order. Huh? Oh, God. Go ahead, go ahead. Write that down. Write that down. Write that down. So here we go. He wants to know, he wants everybody to know that you owe him and not God. Because God paid the price. Man's favor is counterfeit. And again, he has limits. So sometimes they'll come in acting upon fool. But always remember that God is your source. And he deserves the honor and the glory. So my Bible tells me in, in Philippians 4.19 it says, and my God shall supply all my need, or my need, I'm going to make it personal. It shall supply all my need, but I know it says supply all your need, but I'm just saying. We should get to a place where it says he supplies all my need. See, see, because, again, because he's no respecter of person, then you can get the other person to say, my need. So God, God ain't into leaving people hungry and homeless and out there not being broke and all that stuff. I mean, being broken and all that. But see, here's the thing. Men got to get to a place where they renew their mind and understand that they're not in the world. Stop trying to live in the world, doing what the world would do, expecting God's favor. Amen. See, see, we got to get to a place where we know because of God's favor is on our life, there's nothing impossible. It says nothing impossible to those that believe. So all you got to do is, even because belief sometimes give you a little bit of a doubt. But see, then you can even transfer that thing and say, all those that know. Because I know that God is my healer. I know that he's my provider. He's healed my body before. He's got me. Some of y'all ain't never heard this story. I don't know if some of y'all remember when you only could get $5. Some of y'all that's new. You remember when you can only get $5 out of the ATM? You remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. See, I was so broke, I couldn't even get the $5 out of the ATM. I was at the ATM trying to transfer 30 cents, and it was charging me 45 cents. See, every time I was trying to change it over so I could get that $5, it was charging me. But I tell y'all now, because I got to a place where I said, you know what, Lord, I have power to get wealth. So, 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 I understand the enemy has perverted it to try to pay, make people think all the pastor wants is my money. <laughs> no, not this pastor. Because Walmart wants your money. Sears, Sears wants your money. <laughs> okay. Best Buy wants your money. All right. Okay. So, you know, the, the CPS wants your money. Okay. So, but in the, in, at the end of the day, you can't call CPS or none of them when your child in the hospital. Oh, God. Who you calling? Calling Jesus. Number one, that should be number one person. But then you call his ambassador. Hey, Pastor, what's up, man? What you doing? I need you to get on over here. That's, uh, that's why I'm paying tithes and offering to get your little high pots on over here, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, he added that now on there. So if God is the one who meets all of our needs in Jesus, we can accept the favor. We can walk with our heads up, knowing even when the storms of life come, we can always lean and depend on Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, so, so, so see, here we go. Philippians 4, 19 through 20, and the Message Bible breaks it down like this. So, so it says, and now I have it. I have it all. And keep getting more. Wait a minute. I can really stop right there. He said, I have it all. And keep getting more. So it, does that sound like an overflow? Amen. Hmm. Does it say that? He said, the gifts you sent to, to Aphrodite, thank you, Holy Ghost. Aphrodite were more than enough. Wait a minute. So God, God is a God of more than enough? He said, more than enough, like the sweet-smelling sacrifice roasting on the altar, filling the air with fragrance, pleasing God to no end. He says, you can be sure that God will take care of some things. Okay, just a little bit of things. Oh, okay, so everything you need, say he generous, he generous uh, his generosity exceeding 
I mean, are y'all seeing this? So exceeding even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus. So it says, our God and Father abounds in, in glory that pours out into eternity. Yes. Come on. So would you say that God is our source? So all the favor that abounds in Christ, we have access to it. Everything, right? So everything that God has promised us, we have access to it. So we don't have to walk around broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, and I know back in the day they used to say, well, Jesus became poor that we made. I think they took that, 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 that scripture out of context. Because if Jesus was poor, why would he need a treasurer? <laughs> why would he need Judas to keep the money? And then, oh, man, let me deal with that. And he knew that Judas, what Judas was going to do, and he still called him friends. Man, let one of your your, your homegirls or your homeboys mess around and stab you in the back, lie on you, cheat on you, or whatever. You'd be like, oh, child, I'm cutting them off. I'm done with them. You better know that it's God that told you to cut them off. But you still call them your friend because if Jesus is our great example, he was going to the cross and said, go ahead, Judas, go and do what you're supposed to do. I don't mind having a couple of Judases in my life. Because if I got a couple of them in my life, therefore that God is going to use me in a way that I never even thought that could happen. Hmm. So let's take it back. 2 Kings 4 and 3 again. He said, Elijah said, go around to all your neighbors and ask them for empty jars. And here's the key. He said, get as many as you can. So he didn't, he didn't say just get a little bit. So don't be afraid to ask. See, because here's the thing. I know the Bible says, in, a, in, in, in another place it says, be the lender and not the borrower. That, that's what it said, right? But I believe that God, being who God is, if he allows me to get it from someone else, he's going to pay the debt. Oh, I should run outside right now. <laughs> see, see, God is the one that's going to pay the debt. So he told her to go all to her neighbors, but I want you to see, he said to her, don't gather just a few. Get as many as you can. So in other words, don't think small. <laughs> think about more than enough. So I encourage you with this because God is saying to me, don't think small. See, because sometimes I think people think that pastors, they, they get a message to preach to you. No, it starts with me first. So when I was up this morning at three something this morning, talking to the Lord, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm getting it. I, 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 I'm trying to understand. And this whole thing with the oil, he gave that to me this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, Lord, that makes sense. Because I'm, I'm trying to, because sometimes, you know, when you're studying, you want to try to make things, make sure that things are right. And you say the right thing. See, Cedric, Cedric you no, know, because Cedric's a studier. See, so, so you got to make sure, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, I need to find a commentary for this. I want to make, and I'm always like, man, rest in it. I got you. I say, Lord, I know, but I, boy. See, God don't talk to y'all like that, right? So here we go. God has more than what we're seeing in our local assembly. But we, if we would be like the widow woman and obey the voice of the Lord, he gave her clear instructions, but she had to obey the instructions despite of the lack of her husband for his plan. Because she, she had every right to be like, oh, Man, my husband was the great bishop and he ain't do it. No, girl, you better listen to the voice of God. So picking up in verse 4 again, he said this. He said, go inside your house and shut the door behind you. You and your sons. So sometimes you got to get in a private place. Just you and God. Okay, Lord, <laughs> I need you right now. Lord, this joke on my job, Lord. Oh, God, you're going to have to help me or else I'm going to choke them. Oh, God, you already know that I was going to say that. <laughs> but, Lord, help me. Because they act like they're all that, Lord. And I know, despite of me living in the projects right now, Lord God, I know you got the house on the hill. Lord, I know that you got the gated community for me. But, Father God, you said if I be faithful with a little bit, mm -hmm. you will make me rule over much. Thank you. So, Father God, I get up right now and walk in the obedience of what it is that you have called me to do. 
So we get to a place where we say, okay, Lord, I heard what you said. <coughs> now I'm going to walk in it. God has told some of y'all to, to, to get your own business. You ain't supposed to work for nobody. I'm going to say it again. Somebody in this place this morning, God told you, stop working for somebody else. He said you've been diligent on everybody else's job. Okay, you've made somebody else millions of dollars. And he told you to start your own. I posted on my Facebook page a couple of days ago about, um, I, and I got it from Dr. Miles Monroe. I dare not take, take credit for it. He said, some of us, we need to get to a place as Christians. Stop asking God for money and ask him for some ideas some inventions because there's some things that God has placed inside of each and every one of us we have yet to tap into so again he said pour the oil into the jars each jar was filled so put he said put he said put it over you know to one side so once they're filled put it over again following instruction has given her after the prophet had asked her and then it came back I'm going backwards a little bit in verse 2 it says this how can I help you? So if somebody come to you and say, how can I help you start your business? What do you have? Well, um, you know, I didn't graduate from high school. I say, no, no. What is it that you have? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a college graduate, um, you know, and I specialize in taking care of children and I specialize in, oh, I need that. I've been looking for somebody to pour into. Because you're empty and I got the oil that needs to be poured Amen. into. Because that oil sig signifies the, the, the blessing. Because think about it. When the, when the, when the, um, the prostitute, she, she all Jesus up with that spignon and that, that myrrh and frankincense and all that stuff, right? See, she was preparing the best. She didn't just use a little bit. Because y'all remember what Peter said? He said, hey, you know, that, that money could have been used and to help feed the poor and all that stuff. And Jesus told him, he said, wait a minute, the poor are going to be with you always. But I won't always be with you here in the flesh. Take care of me. Understand the favor, that the presence that you're in right now. He said, how can I help you? Tell me. So some of us got some things in our house. We got to get to a place where we utilize what we have. But the way we respond to our daily situations is very important. But we, we need to get to a place where we step out on faith in not just some of the areas of our lives, but every area of our lives. So we, God has greater, and I'm going to show you, God has greater for us than where we are right now. Because again, he said we walk by faith and not by sight. It's not meant for us to give up on God's favor. He has mandate. He has a mandate on our lives, but we must respond accordingly. He said, "The harvest. We it's harvest time. The harvest was there as long as we do what we needed to do and put in what God has called for us to put in. Some of us need to get up at three o'clock in the morning. And God will give you those witty inventions. So here we go. I'm almost done already. Verse number six. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full, she said to her sons, bring me another vessel. So it was so much when she had just a little, it was so much, all the vessels that she had, it was no more room. So now he said, go, what you have, take it, you know, sell it, and then pay off your debt. So I want to tell you this morning, don't quit being a vessel. <laughs> we don't want the harvest to stop, do you? So we don't want the harvest to stop, and there's some times where we get to where we feel like we want to throw in the towel. But I tell you this morning, I want you to tell your neighbor, don't quit. Don't quit. You're on the verge of a breakthrough. Come on, y'all. Say, don't quit. Don't quit. You're on the verge of a breakthrough. <laughs> She's like, come on, man. Pastor got excited about that. I did. Because I love God so much. And I want to see the best. I want the people of God to see the best that God has endured for all of us. I don't want us to have be mediocre because I'm tired of these cats. Let's, you know, and again, I'm just going to call it what it is. I don't know how they're living outside of what they show on TV, but these guys like 2 Chain and, and Beyonce and, and Jay-Z and all of them, there's no way in the world they should be living better than us. 
I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say, he said, Bill Gates figured out, he asked God for the inventions and the witty idea, and now he's a multi-billionaire. One of the most rich, wealthiest men in the whole world. And I don't even know if he knows God or not. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, if we get to a place where we say, okay, Lord, I surrender. Lord, Lord, help me. Because I know where I am right now is not the best. Because mm -hmm. I, again, I share my testimony. I was in a place where I worked five jobs. I worked five jobs. Because I was about to marry my wife. I was like, okay, I'm not going to be by myself. Okay, Lord, you have shown me my good thing. You say, I obtained, here we go, a favor from the Lord. <laughs> say, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And then he says, obtains favor from the Lord. So I was like, all right, Lord, I want to take care of the favor that you got for me. So if I have to give up my apartment, my one-bedroom apartment, and move into my friend's basement, paying less, working more, to do what you have called me to do, because, Lord, I'm looking 20 years down the road. And I'll be dog if I don't make the sacrifices now to make sure that things are good later. But sometimes we don't want to make the sacrifice. We're like, Lord, the favor of the Lord, yeah, do your part. Because for her to, eat, to, to walk in the favor that God had ordained for her life because her husband didn't do what he was supposed to do, she had to obey the man of God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So here we go. Galatians 6, 9 and 10 says this. He says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. So don't get tired when, when you're doing good. Be like, man, Pastor, I hear you, man. Uh, I've been, I've been living saved for the Lord, and it seems like, no, don't get tired of living good. What does it say? At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of a blessings if what? If we don't give up. So can you imagine, I think about Flo, Joe, and, and all those, those runners or whatever, you know, first couple of times they ran, you know, they got whipped. Because, you know, they ain't always win. And, you know, and then old boy on his way out, Hussein Bolt. Got his butt whipped on the way out. But there's a lot of races. He was so up far up front. He was just kind of looking back like, all right, y'all, y'all ain't. So think about this. Get to a place where you're only looking at the finish line. Mm -hmm. When you say, okay, Lord, I know what you got in store for me. I know you got the business for me. I know I'm going to raise both of my hands again. I know I'm going to run around here like nobody's business and they ain't going to know why I'm acting the way that I do. I know I'm going to call the bank. We've been faithful. Because a lot of people, I've heard people come in here, they be like, man, I, I didn't think that it looked like this from the outside. I said, good. Mm -hmm. I said, but again, everything that we should do, it should be in excellence. Mm -hmm. So rather if it's big or small, I know, I know y'all, y'all, y'all helped me. <laughs> y'all helped me because I, for those who are visitors, huh, I'm a little special. I'm a little OCD on some things. <laughs> You know, just like that oil is going down, I move my phone out the way. <laughs> so here we go. Verse 10. He said, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to who? Everybody. Everyone. Yeah. And then he be a little bit more specific, especially to those in the family of faith. Mm -hmm. So should we be tearing each other up? No. 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 Man, we should be loving and supporting one another. Instead of tearing each other down. Because he said, the Bible tells us, he said, those who are spiritual, go and restore that one. Your brothers and sisters don't, man, Brother Lawrence, you know, you're going, no, Brother Lawrence, I know you're having some trials, tribulations, brother, man, I love you, I'm praying for that. you. Yeah, but see, then I encourage you. Amen. I don't tear you down. Because let me ask y'all this. Should we look different from the world? Amen? Amen. Okay, so because of that, and we're walking in the divine favor that God has ordained and destined for our lives, we ought to handle situations differently. So this woman, she didn't handle it maybe like other people may have handled it. She said, okay, yeah, I know my husband didn't do what he was supposed to do. You know what? Fine. The dead is still owing and my boys ain't going to out there to be no slaves. So she did what she needed to do. So don't be afraid to be, be in a place to where you're asking in faith and knowing and understanding that God's favor is on your life. John 14, 13 says this. He says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son may bring glory to the father. 
So if, if, if we're asking God for something, it's going to bring glory to, to God. So even with the favor, God wants us to do well. He wants us to be healed and not sick. He wants us to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Matthew 21, 22 says this. It says, you can pray again for anything if you have what? Faith. You have faith that you will receive it. So a lot of times we're asking God for stuff and we like, well, it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, man. There's some things that I'm believing God for some big stuff. Amen. 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 See, because I've been faithful with the little bit. Because when, when I had that, going back to my little story, when I had my little basement apartment, my basement apartment was probably like half of this right here. I had my little bed in there, had my washing and dryer in there, ain't had no kitchen or nothing like that, but that thing was clean. So when God moved me up to the next place, because I was like, okay, Lord, I, you know, this is my, this going to be my wife. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm looking forward to the 20 year anniversary and the 25 year anniversary. I'm looking forward to having the children. See, my child is right there. You know, I got two other other ones in the back. I'm believe, and, you know, and I'm like, God, I want to understand. Your Bible says I obtain favor from you That's because right. I found a wife. Right. Cause she's my good thing. <laughs> so as I close today, we got to keep in mind that the widow, the widow woman, did not allow her debt to wipe out her favor. He didn't allow the debt to wipe out the favor that was on her life, nor should we allow the cares of this world to stop us from seeking God's face. Not for his presence, but for his presence. So, so we don't have to seek God for, for, the, for well, Lord, if you give me, now he'll give it to you. Because y'all know my favorite scripture, come on. Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, so if he's told us that, 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 that'll happen because I'm telling you, I know there's a whole bunch of scriptures in there, the Bible that you can have your favorite, but that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. okay. So, because if I seek him first, everything else is going to come. Yeah. The blessings are going to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the enemy wants, he got a target on my head. I get it. But again, at the, at the end of the Bible, at the end of the story, I win. Amen. Amen. Last scripture, here we go. John 15, 7 says this. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want. Anything you want and will be granted. See, but see, we got to make sure that we don't misinterpret that. Don't be out there asking for somebody else's husband. <laughs> well, Lord, you said anything I want. No, God, that ain't bringing glory to God. Wives out there, you know, talking about let me get that husband, and then the husband talking about man, that wife right there, man, she, oh, that girl right there, she, no, the devil is a liar. That ain't the best of God, because God don't, you don't have to share. God wants you to become one, not become three, four, and five, and six. No, one, because the Bible tells us, what you say, what He has joined together. Let no man put a son. Right. But again, so fellas that's not married and who's watching online, you obtain favor from God. Mm -hmm. Ladies, don't just accept anything. Mm -hmm. And as I tell my daughters, if I may be transparent, don't give up your cookies. That's right. Save your, your, your recipe for your husband. Amen? Amen. 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 So how many of y'all really understand and believe that the favor of God is on your life? Amen. Amen. If that's you, stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord this morning. Amen. Father, we bless you this morning for your presence. Thank you, Father God, for all that you've done. No, 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 the bottom. Thank you.
you, God, for your presence, Lord, your anointing, your favor. Lord God, like never before. Father, if there's anybody in this place, Lord God, that's ready truly to walk in your favor, in your anointing, Lord God. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that they will meet me at this altar this morning. If you say, you know what, Pastor, I want to, I want that favor on my life. I want to see the hand of the Lord on my life. Yes, I'm a believer. I say yes to Jesus, but I haven't quite walked in the favor that God has ordained for my life. If that's you, meet me at this altar. there's anybody else this morning, you might say, yeah, pastor, I want to say yes to Jesus. And I haven't been seeing the, the favor that you were talking about. And if that's you this morning and you haven't said yes, accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, you too, I want you to meet me at this moment. As a sign of surrender, just hold your hands up to the Lord this morning. Thank you, sir. You got to stretch your hands towards these men of God this morning. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we bless you, Lord God, for Brother Lawrence, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you anoint him afresh. I bind up the enemy from upon his life. I thank you, Father God, even today, Lord God, as we baptize him today, Lord. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that his life would never be the same. Lord God, any alcohol, any drugs, anything, Lord God, that's not like you, we bind up the enemy right now. Satan, you cannot have him. Father God, we thank you that we bind up generational curses, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, for the generational blessings. Have your way in his life on today. Father, you said whatsoever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, Lord God, it shall be done. But Lord, for your glory. So Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will be glorified in Brother Lawrence's life from this day forward, Lord God. Father God, that everyone will see that the hand of the Lord is upon his life. I declare favor. Lord God, that the anointing will overflow and take him over. But Father, I thank you, Lord, that you won't bring anything on him that he can't bear. Father, we thank you that no weapons formed against him shall be able to prosper. That your angels are encamped around the bottom in the name of Jesus. Lord God, anoint his mind his spirit, his soul. Father God, that he walks in your divine power, authority, and anointing. And we bless you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bless you, Lord God, for the hand of the Lord is truly upon Julian's life. Oh God, anoint him afresh, Lord, Lord, you have so much in store for him. I pray, Lord God, for his wife and the future, Lord God, his children and his children's children. Lord, we pray for his bloodline. Lord God, you said it, Lord. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So, Father, we bless you on today for your favor. Lord, everything that he touches, Lord, every place that he sets his foot, Lord God, is anointed and appointed. So, God, have your way today. Have your way, Lord God, upon his life each and every day, Lord God, even when he sleeps at night. Father God, anoint his hands, Lord God, to play the keyboard. Anoint his hands to play the drums. Lord God, anoint him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, have your way in his life. 
Lord God, that he will be an example for his brothers and his sister. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that he has a heart to serve. Oh God, thank you, Lord God, that the enemy has no power over him. Thank you, Father God. For people will be drawn to Jesus Christ because of his testimony. We bind up any wicked spirits. Any girls that that is not of you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you just for his wife. Oh God, thank you. He doesn't have time to mess around. So Father, we bless you, Lord. No alcohol, no drugs, no righteous living, none of that. Father, we can live a, a righteous life that's pleasing unto you. So Father God, have your way in this life like never before. Oh God, we give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. stripes we work oh God we thank you Lord God we've been praying we've been fasting Lord Lord we know Lord that you are a healer Father God do it for your glory for no one else's glory Lord God but yours the muscles Lord God that are tight Lord God allow them to be loosened so she can stretch and praise you, Lord God, like you have purpose for her. Oh God, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, even in the side of her body, her legs, Lord, thank you right now. Lord God, do it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. Lord God, you said signs, wonders, miracles, Lord. You said greater things that we will do. Oh, God, I feel it already. You said greater things that we will do than you, Father. Lord, that, that you will be glorified. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we're touching and agreeing, Lord, on today. Lord God, that you will continue, Lord God, to show yourself mighty in every area of our lives, Lord God. God, thank you, Father, for you are King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. Yes. Father, we bless you on today yes. that there's none like you, Father. Have your way, Lord. 
Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. I want you to think about something that you haven't done in a while. Move your fingers, move your arms. Something that you haven't done in a while. Thank you, God. You got to receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, it's for your glory, Father. So, Father God, have your way on today. Lord God, for your, your anointed power in the mighty name of Jesus. You are God, you are King, you are Lord of Lords. Thank you, God. We bind the enemy but right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father God, we bless you today. And we call it done. In Jesus' name. your question. Was it a struggle or a fight for you to get here today? step out. You've been holding, you've been holding back. It hasn't been God. God has already promised you that whatever it is that you're believing him for, he's already shown you, you in it. But you gotta not doubt. Because maybe what everybody else know of your past or think that you may not think that you qualify but God has qualified you so because God has qualified you it's time for you to get the haters off of you stop answering certain phone calls people that's not going to do you anywhere because she's watching because that's going to hinder where God is trying to take you because if you're trying to hold on to what they did to you because what they did to you all they did is push you further all they did is push you further <laughs> to him. Yes, sir. And because he's pushed you further to him, he's just saying, do what I've told you to do. Just like when the when the when the woman, when the prophet told her to go out and get the oils and all those things, God wants you to go out. He's, he's giving you specific instructions. He just wants you to remove the doubt out of the way. Into me. So he used your sister getting baptized to get you here today to get what he had for you. Amen? Amen. All right, God bless you. you saw was to help you for where you are now. Things that you may have saw in ministry, I'm talking about the bad things. Those bad things he showed you so you won't make some of the same mistakes that somebody else did. 
Because what God, what God has for you, nobody can stop it. But you got to get to a place where you say, you know what, Lord? Because you've said it to me multiple times in the past, I just want to be obedient. Ask God to show you exactly how you would how he would have you to be obedient. Because he's shown you. Not just in the scripture. He's shown you some practical things. There's some practical things that you had doubt about. Just like with the lady back there. But God is saying we got to remove doubt. Because in order for you to go further in him. Those things that you went through. When everybody else here would go. Thought you was crazy. God was getting you by yourself. So he could talk to you. When everybody thought you was hearing voices and all this stuff. No, 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 no. You was hearing the voice of God. He was trying to let you know. But the enemy was talking too. But man, I want to tell you publicly that the, uh, the, 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 the purpose and the will that God has ordained for your life, you're going to walk in it. There's some things that he's been telling you and you're like, well, Lord, that sounds a little crazy. No, do it. If God has told you to, let, I, I'm just using an example. If God has told you to move and you're like, well, Lord, I'm kind of, things kind of tough right here. If God has told you to move, you can never fail. Because of the anointing that's on your life is why the struggle has been such a, a battle. Because the enemy wants to give you all these crazy thoughts and, well, you know, they think this about me. They, it doesn't matter, simply. You have a heart of gold. And I know now why God had me pray for you this morning. Because he's trying to take you further. Anytime we're going further, there's going to be some resistance. But just recognize that that's all it is, is a little resistance. Because where God is taking you, nobody can stop it. Hey, I love your mom, but she can't stop it. I love your family, they can't stop it. As long as you walk in the obedience that God has ordained for your life, hands down, brother, it's going to prosper. Because he's ordained for your life to prosper. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Love you, man. that you hang around because of the anointing that's on your life. But sometimes you don't believe that because what people have said to you, maybe what you might think that I look like I was telling somebody about you this morning on my way to church and you're beautiful. Your spirit is beautiful and you're beautiful on the inside and outside. to step out. I understand the whole Brady clan. I get it. I get it. Your mom has been taking care of you, your sister and all of them, and your brother. I, I get it. But see, here's the thing. Because you don't fit in, and you keep trying to fit in, you're going to struggle. When you say, you know what, Lord, I'm comfortable in who I am in you. It's like, a, like somebody going to like kick in the door like they do in Iraq somewhere. And you'll be like, man, okay, this is what my pastor was saying about me. 
God use your dad to get you here. Love him. God bless him. And that's it. Not talking against your father, your natural father. But God used him to get you here. I know you long probably for that relationship. That's why I love on you the way that I do. That's why I spend the time with you the way that I do. That's why I love the fact that you, you spend the time with, with my daughters. Because they've been longing for a big sister. And you don't have to be the middle child with them. You can be the big sister. Step out. Don't try to fit in no more. If God tells you to walk away from Walmart, that means that he has something better for you. Trust me, 24 years in the military, first and the 15th. But when God was like, are you trusting me? You trusted the first and the fifteenth. I said, Lord, I trust you. And it's been over three years and haven't missed the beat. Because I trust them. Oh, let me tell you, people talked about me too. Call me black. I'm black, y'all. Am I black? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I had to see myself as God saw me. And once I did that, everything changed. My life changed. Come on now. You stay with us, you've traveled with us, and you've seen how we live. And it's not that, oh, look at me, look at me. No. It's for the glory of God. But as you've heard me say, there's no favorites. God don't have no favorites. All we got to do, you said yes to Jesus. And because you said yes to Jesus, we all have access to it. But what's the sense of being in the family and you're not walking in your, in your position or your place? So from here on out, from this day forward, I'm giving you the tools. You've been with us almost five years of the ministry taught you all the other stuff. You've had some private time with us. You've gotten the tools to succeed. Now it's time for you to walk in. Will you do that for me? Will you do that for yourself? You will. You promise. Everybody's watching, right? I love you. Walk in the anointing that God has for your life. You don't have to depend on your mom. She loves you. But God wants you to depend on him. Got it? Love you. stuff in store for your life, man, but God wants you to be a young man. You don't have to be your mama's husband. And I say that in a nice way. And what I mean by that, because I too was in your place. And I felt like I had to protect my mom and do everything for her and all those different things, but God, he had me. He still has me. And he took care of my mom until the day she went home to be with the Lord. And the greatest gift that you've given your mother is saying yes to Jesus. And being there and staying out of trouble and doing all those things. Don't let anybody tell you anything contrary to what God has said that's in your life. Do you understand that? So you don't have to be the cool kid. Just be the God kid. Be confident in who you are in Jesus Christ. As long as you keep focus on Christ, man, the sky's the limit. That's right. People are going to know who, who, who you are. But 
they're going to know who you are because you lifted up the name of Jesus. So pray for your mom. Be, a, be an example for her and let her continue to be proud of you. But also be who God has called you to be. Okay? All right, God bless you. something. Some of you I've already shown you this and some people and I have my daughter still recording because I want people to get on board with what I'm about to show you. How many of y'all believe that there's nothing too big for God? nothing too big for God. Right? How many of y'all are tired of people fleecing the sheep? Lying to God's people. Not keeping it real. Bible says you have not because you ask them. And I know that there's some things that I need to ask for, but sometimes because I'm so concerned, I'm so cautious about being thrown into the bucket or, or to the pile of other pastors. And I have to make sure I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be prideful, but Lord, I don't, I don't want to be like everybody else. Because sometimes, you know, we've seen it. I grew up in church or whatever. It's okay here. You know, and again, I'm, let me let you know. They say, okay, well, this line, the $100 line, this the $200 line, the $1,000 line, or whatever. Have you seen that? But see, here's the thing. When people say, there's five people in here, and I hate it. Let me, let me just say that. I hate it when they say, well, there's five people in here that should give, let's say, $10,000. You got $10,000, amen, give it. But I'm just saying, but I, what I don't like is when, so what happens if that sixth person wants to stand up and give the give or whatever, so do they, so it's either one or two things. God didn't tell that sixth person to give it or the person standing in front was lying. So for me, I've gotten to a place where sometimes I don't want to ask. But I know that God has prompted me today to ask. I ain't going to say a certain amount. But I want y'all to take the opportunity because I want to show y'all something today. Come on, come on, come on, Mika. Go to the... Let me show y'all. Because this is an opportunity to give today. Go ahead, Mika. We have two tithes and offerings buckets right here. I mean, boxes right here. And, and I want to show you guys what I want you, as you're giving today, but not just today, on a regular basis, I do believe that they're here, before we go any further, I do believe that we're supposed to have our own children's sanctuary. I do believe that we're supposed to have an adult sanctuary, classrooms, um, places where the children can play. We can do events and stuff at the church and not charge an arm and a leg. Are y'all with me? See, because the Bible says despise not small beginnings. And I'll share with you even in the beginning when we were doing the news and activities, we're not a small church. There's hundreds of people that are watching Thousands sometimes or what, whatever the case may be online. And there's some people that we have that give online. But see, here's the thing. I want people to see what we're trying to accomplish. Go ahead. This right here is our potential new location. We haven't put a bid on it or anything like that because here's the thing. People want money. 
Remember what I shared about, you know, Walmart wants your money, KFC wants your money, these different things or whatever. But when it comes to the church, because again, I say this, this was tough for me to ask this morning. Because like I said, I don't want to be clumped in the thing because I don't want my, pa my pastor. So for those who know me, know I'm not that type of pastor. But I, me and my wife, we're givers. I'm, I'm almost the bet everybody in this room just about that, that are part of this ministry, just about, not 100%. My wife and I have either taken you out, have bought something for you or whatever, done so, because again, we understand the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto our bosom. But remember, I told you about the $5. I remember when I couldn't get them $5 out of the machine, but God told me that I was stealing from him. Now, I'm not accusing of nobody in here of stealing from God this morning. All I want to do is to encourage you and show you where there's a potential that we could be going. Go ahead. So here, this place right here, they, it's, it's about 10 miles from here or whatever. They have a cry room for the people who have little bitty babies because we need that. And they still can enjoy the service. So right here at the top, they got the cry room, and then that's the window over there where they can look into the sanctuary, and then that's the main entrance right there. Next slide. All right. Beautiful sanctuary. Now, we're going to take some of that, a lot of that stuff down, because it's a Catholic church currently, and Jesus ain't on the cross. All right? Okay, amen? amen. Okay, Jesus ain't on the cross. He got off the cross, because if he was still on the cross, there's no sense of us being here this morning. So, but we can change all of that. All right, so that's the sanctuary downstairs. Go up. All right, see, here's the downstairs area. That's the stair, stairwell going upstairs to another place. They got multiple classrooms and different things like that. Next. All right, so that's the view from upstairs. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. So think about the excellence that we have here, and we'll be able to take it over there. Amen? Amen. All right, next. Now, we've got, got two classrooms upstairs that, you know, kids, they can get theirs in, or young adults and different things like that, they can get theirs in or whatever. And we can, again, rent out the classrooms, have different financial peace classes, uh, people, job fairs, different things like that. Next, here's the outside classrooms. They have uh, some portables outside, and again, multiple things. I mean, this, this, this is, is great. Next. Some more outside classrooms. Go ahead. Okay, so now, this place has a full kitchen. Brother Alvin got excited when he thought about that because Al is a cooker. So we, we so Al going to just take on the role. He don't know it yet, but he's going to take on the, the role of the church cook. And he's going to get a team. You're going to have your cooking ministry. But he's going to have a restaurant, too. So, yes, gonna, so there it is. There it is. So one, one, one second, Brother Lawrence. Let me finish this up. So here we go. Then you got the full kitchen. So this place over here to the to the um, right of the, the um, kitchen area, that's the, the fellowship hall slash our, I'm looking and envisioning that being like our youth for just for our youth. Because the youth, they need their own stuff. The young kids, the children or whatever, we can, you know, can have their little classrooms and stuff for now until we grow past that. Because I believe it ain't going to take long for us to grow past it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> All right, so... You know, we can rent this facility out for, again, lower price than everybody else or whatever, but just be able to be a blessing and utilize those funds to, to funnel through the ministry. Amen. Amen. I mean, does that make sense? Amen. I mean, you see, because here's the thing. We shouldn't have to beg for money. Because, I mean, there's no money problem. Amen. Just got through watching a couple of movies where, where it showed that they shredding the money. They just get rid of the money, millions of dollars. Talk about because we don't want to put them, the serial numbers are not good. They spend, don't they? <laughs> but see, a lot of times when they make those movies, it's based on, some of it is based on what is actually happening. Waste of money. Next. So this is the outside area. And it's sitting, you know, this, this, this is a nice area we can see. Like with that walkway, I didn't want to take a picture of that little Mary because they got like a little Mary outside or whatever. And we don't we don't do the, the rosary beads and all of that stuff or whatever. My wife, she's so sweet. She she made I don't know exactly how you said it, babe, but basically she was like, "Look, y'all gonna get, take that Mary with y'all, right? <laughs> take that jumper with you, boy." Oh, that's what you said. Okay, all right. 
But the guy had already told me, he was like, oh, no, we're going to take this good. Praise the Lord. So anyway, this is the outside area. All right, next. So now, I'm asking you today, and again, I, I, I come before you humbly. I know some of you already have your tithes and offerings already, but I ask you to go a little bit further. Babe, you got the checkbook, right? Okay, all right. So um, go a little bit above your tithe. Not a little bit. Go above your tithes and offerings. The property is sitting on three acres of land. Can we do something? Hold on, Mika. Can we do something with three acres for the kingdom? Yes, sir. We won't have to go and do our, our church picnics anywhere else. See, and they got some place for you to come in and, and, and do some physical therapy for some people there. Mr. Taylor, we got some space for you now. We got some place where you can teach the Bible study, set it on, on a different night from our regular Bible study, teaching, you know, young men and mentoring. Them. We got somewhere to do that. I mean, come on, y'all. 11,000 square feet. We're sitting right now in 1,600 square feet. So can you imagine how much space that we, we could utilize for the kingdom of God? Amen? Amen. All right, and last but not least, the, the little bit of price. Yes, you're right. That is a great price. Because there's all of that, a lot of that's worth way more than multi millions of dollars. But see, here's the thing. The Catholic Church, and again, I ain't beating up on the Catholic Church. Y'all need to get saved. Get Jesus ahead of your life. I'm going to say it. Hey, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they're, they need to get, they're getting rid of it. They own it outright. They don't have a mortgage. And the thing that tripped me out is, I didn't even ask the guy the other day, and when I talked to him, he was like, man, I can't just give it to you. I'm like, well, you. well the Holy Spirit must have prompted you to say that because I didn't even ask you to give it to me. Maybe I should have asked you to give it to me. Yeah. See, because they're moving into, they're, they're currently um, building a, mo a $10 million facility. So that's a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Like my wife said, they can just write that off, right, babe? So, in the event that they don't write it off. But like I said, with the with the widow woman, the man of God told her to do something. And I ain't trying to coerce you or anything like that. That's why I didn't even tell you an amount. But all I'm asking is, will you trust that we will do what God has called us to do? Will y'all do that today? So if you're watching online this morning, the website is www.lffcsa.org. If you would, help us fulfill the promise that God has ordained for our life. If you need an offering envelope, please, um, Brother Alvin, I'll get you an offering envelope. And once you're ready and you got it filled out, if you would, stand to your feet this morning. We're going to give and then go.